the low hundreds like Love and Count. about Texas, there are 254 counties in the state, far more than any other state, and the smallest have tiny populations, populations in the low hundreds like Lovett County, while a few, like Harris County, have millions of residents. And Governor Greg Abbott recently ordered that every single one of those counties, no matter their size, can have only one ballot drop-off location. Of course, in the very heavily populated Harris County, it led to lines like these. It's clear that Texas Republicans are intent on doing just about anything they can to keep voting down because polling in the state is looking bad for them right now. Recent polls show Joe Biden and Donald Trump neck and neck in Texas, and in a sleeper race, longtime Senator John Cornyn, who is planning to coast re-election, is now in an absolute dogfight with his Democratic challenger, MJ Hagar. Joining me now is someone who is widely speculated maybe want to run for that very Senate seat before passing on it, former Texas Congressman Beto Work, founder of the grassroots Democratic organization powered by the people. Um, Beto, let me start with where your assessment is um, of where things stand for Democrats in the state of Texas. I was, I was skeptical of uh, the Cornyn race and the Hager race, but I've now seen three polls in a row that show it to be a real race. What do you think? It is a real race, and I think Texans have been able to connect the dots. They understand that John Cornyn has not only voted time and again to take away health care, including protections for pre-existing conditions, but he has enabled Donald Trump. So if you are angered by the kids in cages, if you are so frustrated and disgusted by the open racism uh, of this president, the failed response to COVID and the greatest recession since the Great Depression, that's John Cornyn, who in the Senate has made that possible. And MJ Hagar is the alternative. And Chris, you just showed it. She is one point down yeah. with five days to go before early voting starts in Texas. And Biden is tied with Trump. And we're about to pick up a majority in the state house. So this, this is a very good year for Democrats in Texas. And there's, 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 a, I know the Texas, Texas politics, it's always been hard for, you know, for years, it's very hard for Democrats to raise money there. There was basically, uh, there's a bunch of trial lawyers uh, who would, you could go raise money from. There weren't a lot of other sources of, of, of donors. That has been kind of redone by Act Blue and, and online fundraising, as you demonstrated in, in, in your race two years ago. You've now got the Biden campaign is gonna spend $6 million on Texas campaign ads. Um, the Lincoln Project has a million dollar digital ad campaign in the state. How much does a, the money matter in a state as big as Texas and as expensive as Texas at this point? Yeah, Texas used to be the ATM to the rest of the country. And, and now you're seeing the rest of the country start to invest in Texas including, and I want to thank him publicly, Joe Biden investing $6 million to go on air, which is probably $6 million more than any Democratic nominee has spent in this state in the last three decades. And I think it's in part because he knows he can win it, and also because he knows he can settle the matter on the night of November 3rd. We can wait days or weeks yeah. for the votes in Pennsylvania to be counted, or we can know who the winner is because Texas will declare its results on the 3rd of November with 38 electoral college votes, it is mathematically impossible for Donald Trump to hold on to power and have a second term. We can turn the page on him and Trumpism with Texas, and that's made possible by, by what the great people and candidates in Texas are doing and the fact that Joe Biden sees this opportunity. You know, you, you mentioned uh, the state house, and, uh, and this is, this has less national implications, but it's, it's interesting to me, and, and I think it's sort of window into what's happening, right? I mean. Republicans that run Texas, like, they, you know, it's like Democrats in New York. Like, you know, they, 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 they run, I mean, Democrats are a little complicated because the governor made a pact with the, the Republicans, but like, they kind of view it as a kind of birthright, that they have super majorities, they have the governor's house, they have the statewide offices, and they do what they want with the state. And you've got, you've got Abbott upside down approval rating and a real battle to take over that state house. Like, what, what has happened in the state? that has gotten us here in, in a very short amount of time. You, you went from not a red state, but a non-voting state to one that's actually turning out to vote. So we won 12 state house seats in 2018, leaving us only nine down. And Chris, in 2018, I actually won more votes than Ted Cruz in nine of those districts that we have to win. So not only can we do it, we have turned out a sufficient number of Democrats before. 
And then in addition, since 2018, at least 800,000 new voter registrations just in the last two years. We're gonna win that state house and that voter suppression that you talked about when you began this segment, that Democratic majority can dismantle that infrastructure of intimidation and suppression, the voter ID laws, the ballot uh, drop-off locations that have closed, the racial gerrymander. The answer to that is winning the state house, which will also draw in three new congressional districts after right. this census. So this defines what is possible for a decade going forward, Chris. One other dynamic that I think is fascinating in Texas is, is we are seeing um, particularly white women in metro areas and suburbs who have been Republicans move out of the party. And and the candidate, MJ Hagar, who's, who's running against John Cornyn, she sort of is a perfect demographic fit for that. There was a piece the other day about how she voted for John McCain and Mitt Romney. Um, th that seems to be a big driver along with turning out new folks, getting people registered, this swing, particularly among, uh, among women in, in Dallas suburbs, in Houston suburbs, uh, against the party that, of Trump. Yeah, it's, it's about great candidates like MJ Hagar, or Elisa Simmons, or Akilah Basie, or Natalie Hurtado, who are running at the state house level. And it's about all these fired up volunteers. In fact, on Monday, we're gonna have a million voter phone bank, where we're gonna call a million voters before the first day of, of early voting. That's only possible because literally thousands of volunteers have signed up. So this state is fired up. You see it in the registrations, you see it in the candidates who are contesting across the board, including in districts that last saw a Democrat on the general election ballot 20 years ago. This is a different state with a new electorate that's about to shock the country on the night of November 3rd. You know, it's funny, I, I never know to trust polls, but I do.